best of times? Best of times. Eighteen ninety three. Yes, that's right. All right. Today we start at a birthday doll. Yes. All right. The birthday doll. A birthday doll. Mm -hmm. and I was reading it. Kate is a cripple. She has never walked in all her life. She cannot run about out of doors. She cannot play tag. She cannot play croquet. Lucia comes to see Kate. Katie. She can never go to school. She can never skate in the winter. She has to lie on the bed almost all the time. Sometimes she is in great pain. Katie's mother is her wa is a washerwoman. She washes the clothes in the room where Katie lies. The room is often full of steam. It is not always clean. Her name is Miss Brett. Sometimes Miss Brett would like to buy Katie an orange or a picture book, but she has very little money. Katie has some f kind friends. One day, Miss Carr sent her a lounge. When Katie's back aches very hard, her mother lifts her from the bed and lays her down on the soft lounge. Lucia Starr is just as old as Kate, Katie, Kate. but Lucia is tall and strong. She is very sorry that Katie cannot walk. She often comes to see Katie. One day she brought two boxes. In one box there were some pretty white wrappers for Katie. Katie cannot wear gowns as other girls do. These wrappers had lace about the neck and wrists. There is something else in the in the bottom of one of the boxes. But Lucia did not say anything to Katie about it. She gave the box to Miss Brett. The next day was Katie's birthday. When she awoke in the morning, what do you think she found on her pillow? A doll, a real wax doll. That was, that's what, that was what was in the bottom of the box. Queenie. Oh, oh, said Katie. And then she did not speak again for several minutes, but she smiled. Her cheeks, cheeks grew, ro grew rosy and what do you think she did next? She cried. The tears ran down over the smiles. It was very queer, was it not? When you are very happy, I suppose you laugh. But poor Katie is always sick. She does not feel as a little girl does who is well and strong. That morning, Katie's mother dressed her in one of the pretty white wrappers with lace at the throat and wrist. Then she put her on the lounge and placed the doll beside her. Her name shall be Queenie, said Kate. Katie. Queenie's gown was white like Katie's wrapper. It had an overskirt, and the overskirt was trimmed with lace. Her hair was curled. She wore a necklace and a locket, and locket. She was very fine indeed. Katie's white wrapper and Queenie's white gown made the pillow. Miss Barrett doing the washing. Cases and sheets look dingy. Miss Brett has to work very hard. She does not always keep her room nice. The rustic bucket. But she said that morning, you and Queenie are so fine, Katie dear. I shall have to keep the room looking nicer. Then she made up the bed with fresh clean clothes. She wiped the windows till they shone. She swept the room and dusted. She dusted Katie's little table. In the afternoon, there was a great heap of beautiful flowers sent to Katie in a pretty rustic bucket. There it is, the rustic bucket. Miss Martin Morton sent those flowers from her greenhouse. Miss Morton is the kind lady who taught Katie to read. Story by A F A F B. The Aurora Borealis. In the far north, the nights are long. How should you like to live where the sun does not rise for many weeks? I suppose you think such long nights must be very dark. Here is a picture of a night in the far north. The stars are shining. See the bright stars on the hills. There are trees, but the trees are small. They cannot grow tall where it is so cold. There is a man riding on a, in, a, in a sledge. The sledge is drawn by reindeer. There is another man riding in a sledge. His horses are dogs. Oh, there's our picture. The roar of the northern lights. Right there. I don't want ice. Yep. 
Who is that behind? The long shining arch in the sky is the beautiful Aurora Borealis. Some, we sometimes call it the Northern Lights. We sometimes see it in our land. But it is never so bright here as it is in the far north. There it makes the night seem almost as bright as the day. Sometimes it is, as, it is white as you see in, in the picture. Sometimes it is rosy red. Sometimes it has colors like the rainbow. Sometimes it streams far up in the heavens. Bayard Taylor traveled once in the far north. It was in the winter. He saw a very beautiful aurora. It hung from the sky like a great curtain of light. Story by F.A.H. <clears throat> How Jimmy Stole the Meal. Who is Jimmy? He's a large gray horse. He belongs to Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen drives about a great deal. Jimmy is often tired and hungry at night. When Mr. Allen comes home to supper, he takes off Jimmy's harness. Then, if it, if it is pleasant, he lets him go out on the road a while. He likes to eat fresh grass by the roadside. The neighbors know Jimmy. They are not afraid of him. He does not kick or bite. One night, Mr. Allen was in a hurry. He was going to the store to do some errands, so he did not take off Jimmy's harness. Jimmy helps himself to meal. He let him go out on the road with, with it on. Pretty soon, a man came along with a load of meal. The meal had just been ground at the grist grist meal grist mill it was in bags there were two bushels of meal in each bag the man hitched his horse and went into a house jimmy was walking slowly along he was e eating grass by and by he came to the wagon he lifted his head he smelled the meal he was hungry the meal smelled nice he tried to get some of it to eat but he could not the bags were made of very thick cloth then what did jimmy do he took one of the bags in his mouth he lifted it out of the wagon and trotted off with it he carried it to his own barn. When Mr. Allen came from the store, there was Jimmy and the bag of meal. Jimmy was biting and pulling the string. Mr. Allen did not know where Jimmy got the meal, but our little Miss May Glover told him all about it. May is one of Mr. Allen's neighbors. She saw Jimmy take the bag of meal out of the wagon and trot off with it, so Mr. Allen carried back the meal. Then he gave Jimmy a good supper out of his own meal bin. M-A-C. A little goat. We'll read this story and then we'll stop it. Nanny's visit at Grandma Richmond's, okay? A little goat. Johnny spent, his, spent last summer on his grandfather's farm. His three sisters went with him. Their names are Belle, Bertha, and Marion. They played out of doors from morning till night, but Johnny liked best to go out in the field to see his grandfather work. One day they went to see the sheep and lambs. Grandfather, Grandpa told him a great many things about the sheep and lambs. Their wools cut off and made into cloth. Your coat came off a sheep's back, said Grandpa. The lamb's wool makes a very fine makes very fine soft cloth. Your coat is very fine. I think it must have been taken from some little lamb. The next day Johnny took a walk by himself. He saw a sheep lying under a tree with a little lamb lay beside her. It was a very small lamb. Its legs looked like sticks. It had hardly a bit of wool. Lambs always look like they, like that when they are very young, but Johnny did not know that. He thought, perhaps my nice coat belongs to this very lamb. The lamb looked cold. It said, bah, in a weak voice. The mother sheep said, bah, very loud, and looked at Johnny. Johnny thought she tried to say, what right have you to wear my lamb's coat? Summertime on Grandpa's farm. Johnny was troubled. I did not take it myself, ma'am, he said. I do not think it was fair to take it, and I will give it back. He took off his coat and put it on the lamb. It did not fit well. It was loose, and it hung down to the ground. Johnny searched his pockets for a string to tie it on. He found a bit and crumb of crumbled red ribbon. He tied the ribbon about the lamb. How funny the little creature looked, but Johnny thought it looked warm and comfortable. Then he went to find Belle and Bertha and, Bertha and Marion. They were in the meadow picking wildflowers. Where is your coat, Johnny? Belle asked. Come and see, said Johnny very proudly. I have given it back to the lamb. How those three girls laughed when they saw the lamb. Then they called Grandpa, Grandma to, to come and see. They called Grandpa. Everyone laughed except Johnny. Then Grandma told him the wool would soon grow on the little lamb. It did not need his little coat. It was not really cold in the warm summer, but the cold winter came. 
Before the cold winter came, it would have a thick warm coat of its own. Then Johnny felt better. Story by F.A.H.